Blackwood. It's Lord Blackwood, sir. Sherlock Holmes is a fictional private detective created by British author Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, referring to himself as a consulting detective in the stories. Holmes is known for his proficiency with observation, forensic science and logical reasoning that borders on the fantastic which he employs when investigating cases for a wide variety of clients including Scotland Yard. My favorite version of Sherlock Holmes is Benedict Cumberbatch, solving various mysteries in modern day London. Holmes is assisted by his flatmate and friend Dr. John Watson, who has returned from military service in Afghanistan with the Royal Army Medical Corps. Although Metropolitan Police Service Detective Inspector Greg Lessard and others are suspicious of Holmes at first, over time his exceptional intellect and bold powers of observation persuade them of his value. In part, through Watson's blog documenting their adventures, Holmes become a reluctant celebrity, with the press reporting on his cases and eccentric personal life. Both ordinary people and British government ask for his help. As always, I start with the furthest object or layer, in this case the background. The color is merely a combination of ultramarine blue and burnt umber, which is a near black. I use ivory paper 12 inch by 16 inch as my painting surface and acrylics as paints. I have already sketched out my outlines in proper scale and proportions from my reference picture. Just the marks that will guide me in my painting and not any details, I use pencil for my sketch. I use a flat faux brush to cover grounds quickly and in small corners I use my two daggered brush. This stage is merely blocking in, where I try to cover my white paper with paint as fast as possible so I make broad flat strokes. The coat that Holmes wears is a dark heavy wool blended fabric in which I used ultramarine blue and burnt umber by showing the blue side of the mix. But in the hair, burnt umber is much more dominant. These colors are not much distinguishable in my camera, but there is a difference when you see closely between the colors of the hair, the coat, and the background, but it just looks black in my camera. Still, it's far from black. Even for the darkest shadows in the face, I use the same dark color ultramarine blue and burnt umber, bending it a lot towards burnt umber shade, which means I added burnt umber more to the ultramarine blue and burnt umber mix. The dark mix that bent towards blue was applied to the darkest shadows of the blazer that Sherlock wore. But for the tint areas, I desaturated the dark mix, which is basically dark blue, by adding its complement orange to the dark blue mix, which is then toned down further by adding titanium white. By varying the quantity of white paint and blue and orange, I create a different shades of the blazer color, which I applied in strokes of blocks by using dagger 2 and 4 brushes. Sherlock has dark brown locks and appears an orange tint when light strikes the hair reflecting and refracting colors of combination burnt sienna, orange, desaturated with blue in the mix. I used two dagger to flick those hair locks into the space to give its wavy texture. Sherlock has a signature style of wearing muffler around his neck, designed as tied to give him that educated detective look. This woolen muffler is a much more rich blue as compared to the blazer, so a combination of cobalt teal, ultramarine blue, titanium white and orange for desaturation is used, and the dark shades has the same mix of ultramarine blue and burnt umber, again blocking the layers using two dagger brushes. For covering the layers in the face, I use 
desaturated burnt umber, burnt sienna, and in areas like the nose, the cheeks, and the ears, a tint of cadmium red is added to the mix as these areas appear to have more blood flow of hemoglobin under the skin. Basically, skin is a desaturated pinkish orange hue but may also vary from person to person, may even bend to scales of burnt umber and burnt sienna combinations. Here the beautiful blue ice pupil are combinations of cobalt teal, desaturated green and titanium white and the cornea are desaturated green toned to grey and lightened with titanium white. Relatively small brushes of one flat, one round are used to define these features. Once the blocking in is over, I redefine the edges and the outlines properly to scale and bring about the likeness of Benedict Cumberbatch. This is the modeling stage in which I check for the errors that need to be corrected and remodeled, bringing them to shape and form. The lips are maroon in color. So this is a combination of desaturated cadmium red and toned down with titanium white. As I'm sure that my modeling phase and blogging phase is over, I start detailing the painting with small brushes of size 1 round, 0 round, triple 0 round, 1 flat and 0 flat. In this particular painting, I'll push my limits of detailing and try to detail each and every bit and corner of the face, hair, the blazer and the tie. This will be a tight painting. I'll try and make this painting as photorealistic as possible. Rest, I don't have to explain much, but do check out this time lapse of detailing each and every corner of the painting as I march towards the end of the conclusion. Enjoy! Here I used a technique called glazing in which I lay a transparent or translucent layer of paint over the painted layer. Example, firstly I painted these red bumps and scars of the face which looks like Cumberbatch has measles all over his face but once I layer a transparent or translucent paint over these measled skin, the scars becomes less visible and hence gives a realistic touch to the skin itself revealing those intricate details very subtle. And so, the painting is complete. <sighs> Shit, this is rather difficult. I should stick to my painting. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Feel free to comment below and yeah, share it with your friends. Until then, get creative.